Tonight, find out what program of study received an accreditation. Plus, how to cast your ballot for homecoming court. Stay tuned, Troy Trojan Vision Nightly News starts now. From the High Definition Digital Production Center on the Troy campus, with news from Troy University locations around the world, this is Troy Trojan Vision Nightly News. Hello and welcome to Troy Church of Vision Nightly News for October 24, 2011. I'm Tyler Hatcher. And I am Rachel Ellis. Thank you for joining us this evening. Well, the Troy University Geomatics program got an accreditation earlier this semester, and now the athletic training program has gotten their new accreditation. Derricka James has the story. Troy University's athletic training education program has received the maximum continuing accreditation, which is for the next 10 years. This is just one of the important job fields in the athletic world. Athletic training is a profession that works with the care and prevention of athletic injuries. We primarily work with the physically active population, so we're the people that you see on the sidelines taking care of athletes when they have injuries or running on the field when they have um, something wrong with them during a football, basketball game. According to Benson, the accreditation reinforces that Troy has a high standard program that has had success with its students. Our accreditation is a national governing body that comes in and reviews our program and they evaluate our teachers, they evaluate our students, they evaluate our classes, they evaluate the university, and then reaffirms that Troy University is meeting all of the standards for national accreditation, and it just reiterates what we already knew, that we're a great outstanding program. Troy is one of only five schools in the state of Alabama that offers this program, but it's a highly competitive program, only accepting a certain number of students each year. We've had really great success with our students as far as having great job placement. Right now we have 100% of our students um, being hired um, and that's because we have such a good pass rate on our national certification exam. Our students this past year had 100% pass rate on the national certification exam when the national average is about 65%. Derricka James, Troy, Trojan Vision News. The athletic training program only allows 15 students in the program each year. Homecoming's right around the corner and questions as to what to ex expect are floating around. Nominees have been announced for homecoming court and tomorrow students have the opportunity to elect five women onto court, one of which will be homecoming queen. Vice President of Campus Activities Nicole Acuzio fills us in on what it means to be on homecoming court. The students can come in here from 8 to 5 and vote on the five young ladies that they want to represent them on the homecoming court. And it's so important because they are going to be the representatives on the court. And one of them will be our homecoming queen. And the homecoming queen is a face of Troy University. It's somebody that's going to represent us for the next year. And it's just an honor to bestow upon somebody. So we really want people to come out and vote for who they, they think is going to be the best representative for that. Elections will take place tomorrow in Trojan Center Room 215 from 8 until 5, and you must have your student ID to vote. Well, Rachel, this time the Student Government Association's blood drive happened without a glitch. That's right. Students were able to actually roll up their sleeves and help the Red Cross. Kayla Sheeler has the story. The Student Government Association hosted their annual blood drive on Monday in the Trojan Center ballrooms. Students were given the chance to donate blood and save some lives. Um, today we're having a blood drive. It is uh, a second attempt at the blood drive that we had back this past September. Um, and this blood drive is entitled Taking Care of Business. Some students say this is a simple way to help out in their community. I don't know, it's always good to know that you know you save three people's lives and it's painless, like it doesn't hurt at all, so why not? Earlier this semester, the SGA attempted to hold a blood drive, yet were forced to reschedule after some difficulties. The first drive in um, September, the Red Cross had some technical difficulties, and so they got those fixed, and we are redoing it so we could um, build up the blood supply again. I wasn't because um, the systems were down and stuff, so I had to come back later. I came to give after class, and their systems were down, but they're all working today. All is good. In the spirit of Halloween, students are invited to wear their favorite Halloween costumes for a Halloween costume contest. Well, since it is October, we wanted to do something fun, so we um, are having a ha Halloween costume <laughs> contest this blood job. And if you come in a costume and you give blood, then you get entered to win, and first prize is $50, and second prize is $25. 
With double the American Red Cross staff on hand, the blood drive was a huge success and went smooth with the new equipment. Kayla Schuler, Troy, Trojan Vision News. The results of the Halloween costume contest are still being tallied, and over 100 students and staff members donated blood. And now taking a look at news from around the state, a man charged with killing an Aniston police officer in August will appear in court for the first time since his arrest. 25-year-old Joshua Eugene Russell is scheduled to appear at 9 o'clock today in Calhoun County District Court for a preliminary hearing in the case. Alabama's governor is confident he did the right thing four months ago by signing a strict law that catapulted the state to the forefront of America's debate about illegal immigrants. But Governor Robert Bentley is declining most interviews about it because he says he wants his administration to be remembered for other things. The Birmingham suburb of, suburb of Vestivia Hills could become the third Jefferson County city to approve installing red light cameras at some intersections. The Vestavia Hills City Council is expected to vote tonight on whether to allow the mayor to execute a contract with Red Flex traffic systems. Still to come on Trojan Vision Nightly News, no Trojan football over the weekend, but the soccer team was in action at home. Daniel Percival will be in with all the details coming up in sports. But first, survivors are still being pulled from mounds of rubble the morning after a massive earthquake in Turkey. We'll have that story next. Rescue workers in Turkey scramble to find survivors after a devastating earthquake as Washington pledges aid. I'm Susan McGinnis in Washington. That story coming up. Traditional light bulbs actually generate nine times more heat than light. Switch to Energy Star light bulbs and you'll realize just how much cash you are really burning through. Saving energy saves you money. Learn more at energysavers.gov. In 1887, it was written that we want to educate the mind to think, the heart to feel, the body to act. And it's no different today than it was 125 years ago. Some things never change. The mission of this university is to prepare leaders who are going to go into the communities and make a difference. And I think it's within that culture of caring that excellence is found. Troy University. In class. Online. Within reach. Troy.edu. From the high definition digital production studios of Troy University. You're watching the award-winning Troy Trojan Mission Nightly News. President Obama is offering America support to Turkey after a massive quake struck the country on Sunday. More than 2,000 search and rescue teams are still digging for survivors. Tina Kraus reports from London. An emergency worker in Turkey cradled a rescued toddler after search teams pulled him out of the rubble alive. <laughs> Crews say each survivor gives them hope. A day after a powerful earthquake killed about 300 people. This man says, I was pulled out alive, but my brother is still trapped under debris. Rescuers in eastern Turkey are still trying to find and free dozens trapped beneath collapsed buildings. Survivors spent a cold night on the streets. They're fighting to get their hands on tents and supplies. Authorities are warning people to stay out of damaged homes because strong aftershocks are still shaking the region. The devastation is even too much for some rescuers to take. And it's overwhelming relatives who are starting to hold funerals for the dead. Tina Kraus, CBS News. And now Danielle Percival joins us with sports. So, Danielle, no Trojan football over the weekend, but more other sports to enjoy. That's right. We had a couple other teams that were in action at home, so we'll get into that right now. After a Thursday night matchup on the road, the Troy soccer team was back at the friendly confines of the Troy soccer complex on Sunday afternoon. Dustin Carroll gives us the details of Sunday's match. Sunday afternoon, Troy welcomed in conference neighbors Middle Tennessee State. And the Blue Raiders did not take kindly to that welcoming by dominating early and often. Their first goal came at the three minute mark and they added two more at the 39th and 49th minutes. The Trojans struggled all game with the Blue Raiders defensive pressure, which played a major factor in the three to nothing defeat. Coach Chris Bentley talks about the problems with being a consistent team. You know, I think our biggest problem right now is inconsistency. You know, we went out on Thursday and 
competed, looked great. Uh, had a, probably one of our best first halves we've had in a long time against Western Kentucky. Um, found a way to get a good result. And then uh, come out Sunday and really we didn't compete today. So, you know, at the end of the day, we've got to get these girls motivated. And, you know, I'll take the credit again. I, I, I've got to do a better job of getting them ready. I, it's, it's frustrating. Um, but at the same time, I think they have so much promise. It's just a matter of getting them to understand that when they're young, you know, things they're going to hit adversity and they got to find a way through it. And right now they're not doing that as well as they need to. We got down early, and I don't think we ever found a way out. Bentley says the problem with the 2011 Trojans has not been the opposition, but themselves. Honestly, this year it's really been about our own mistakes that's caused a lot of the problems. It's not been about, uh, you know, aside from Denver really. I mean, a lack of effort at times, you know, inconsistency in play. We give up some silly goals, and, and if you do that, it's too hard to get yourself back out. The loss drops Troy to 9-9-1 nine, nine on the year. Next up, Troy will be at home next Friday against South Alabama at 3 o'clock. Dustin Carroll, Troy Trojan Vision Sports. Even though Troy lost, the team secured a spot in the Sunbelt Conference Tournament for the third straight season after an Arkansas Little Rock loss. But for the first time in 2011, the Trojan volleyball team fell at home as they dropped a four-set contest to North Texas. Troy lost to the Mean Green 3-1 in Sartain Hall Saturday afternoon. It was close with Troy losing by just two or three points in all their losses on the day. The loss drops the Trojans to 6-1 at home. The Trojans return to the court this weekend for their final two road matches of the season. Troy will travel south to take on FIU and Florida Atlantic on Friday and Saturday respectively. The Trojans will then return to Sartain Hall for their final five matches of the regular season. And is it just me or does it just seem odd not to have a Troy football game to review today? We're still in preview mode and here's a look at what's coming up for the Trojans as they hit the road. Going to Miami. Welcome to Miami and welcome to the spotlight of national television. On Tuesday night, the Trojans will be taking on the team they shared the conference championship with last season, Florida International. Not only will the Trojans be on the road, but they'll be playing on ESPN too. No pressure, right? Well, the Trojans are 12-3 and in games on the ESPN network, and head coach Larry Blakeney says it's all about coming out fired up and ready to go. You know, you hope that kind of uh, emotion is there. Uh, if it's not there, then either we're not the right kind of people, or we're not good enough. One of the, or, you know, one of the two. And uh, but you know, we could be, we could play a, we could play a really good game and be emotional and play hard and still get beat at FIU. You know, depending on how how things go. The Trojans will be looking for a different outcome than last season's game against the Golden Panthers. The Panthers handed the Trojans their second conference loss of the season, and Blakeney says with this game being on national TV, winning is key. You know, it's important to play for the exposure. You know, it's not probably very important to go play and lose or lose bad. And I know we're gonna go down there. They embarrass us. We'll be embarrassed. But these players are looking to come out ready to go. Uh, I think the guys will be pumped and excited about it coming because. We definitely don't want to be embarrassed on national TV. Nobody does, so I think we're going to come out with an edge and be ready to play. The advantage of playing in the spotlight of a nationally televised game is only an advantage if you can find a way to win. But Davis says playing in the spotlight is what college football is all about. It is a national television game and everybody's watching, so I mean that's that's what you want. You want everybody to watch you play and, and you know remember this game. Our kids like it most of the time and it helps us recruit students. Uh, uh, so, I mean, I, I'm, I've never been, except for the long time outs, <laughs> I don't have a problem with it. Tomorrow night, the Trojans will be back in action in Miami against Florida International. Kickoff for the game is set for 7 o'clock on ESPN2. So, Tyler, Rachel, kind of a bit of a different schedule for That's the right. Trojans. We've didn't have football this past weekend, but we've got some exciting action for tomorrow night. A little bit of a change in schedule, That's and right. of course we want to send congratulations to um, the soccer team as they are going to the conference tournament. Didn't pick up a win, so best of luck as they are finishing out their season. That's right. We'll have to head over to the football stadium, too, and watch that on the Jumbotron. The Absolutely. SBA has the game playing tomorrow night for That's students. That's right. So. Be sure to cheer on the Trojans. That's right. Thanks, Danielle. Coming up on Troy Trojan Vision Nightly News, researchers now say women with human papillomavirus are more likely to develop cardiovascular disease. That story is after the break. Plus, it was a beautiful weekend in the Troy area. What can we expect this week, Derica? Expected to continue, Rachel, with a little disruption in the midweek. We'll give you, you full details later in weather. Be out there. Be out there. Be out there. Be out there. 
time was, kids did what came naturally. Spending free time running barefoot through the grass, wading knee-deep in streams, climbing to the tallest branch. But today, American kids are more likely found texting, watching TV, or gazing at a computer screen. They spend more than seven hours in front of electronic media. Something essential has been lost. Childhood's connection to the natural world. That's why National Wildlife Federation created the Be Out There movement. Kids move indoors causes a host of problems, from obesity to ADHD. But outdoor play can go a long way to improving kids' health, body, mind, and spirit. It helps them stay fit, enhances creativity and attention spans, and could even make them better students. Do your part. Be a part of Be Out There. There's a reason why they call it the great outdoors. Learn more at BeOutThere.org. Be out from the high-definition digital production studios of Troy University. You're watching the award-winning Troy Trojan Mission Nightly News. Researchers already know that HPV can cause cervical cancer. Now, for the first time, scientists are linking the HPV to another disease. Randall Pinkston has more from New York. Two years ago, doctors told Michelle Appel that she was infected with the strain of the human papillomavirus that can cause cervical cancer. Nobody wants to find out that either they have cancer or that they're that close to having cancer. Now a new study of 2,500 women shows a link between HPV and cardiovascular disease. Women with the cancer-causing strain had a two-fold increased risk for heart disease. Researchers found an association even with women who did not have other risk factors such as high cholesterol, smoking, or diabetes. 20% of people with cardiovascular disease do not have traditional risk factors. Doctors hope pinpointing new causes such as the link to HPV will help save lives. We have to identify new risk markers and risk factors that can lead us to predict heart disease before people have their heart attacks. Michelle says she has a healthy heart, but will pay closer attention from now right. on. Now that we know this, it's something for myself to be on the lookout for. She is now HPV free and has regular checkups to stay healthy. Randall Pinkston, CBS News, New York. Now Derricka James joins us for a look at weather. All right, Derricka, it is still hot. That fall weather it was kind of teasing us last week. It was here and what's, what's going on? That's right. It was here last week, but this week it seems like we're going to get that summer wear because it's going to be nice and warm all week, but we'll get into that later. First, let's look at the campus snapshot. And as we can see, today was very beautiful outside, nice clear weather all day until we got into the um, late afternoon where it started getting a little cloud, which is where we are now. And as we look at our current conditions, we see that the skies are scattered. Um, scattered clouds in the sky with temperature coming in at 78, humidity is at 30 at 52 percent, barometer is at 30.11 inches and steady with winds coming from the west northwest at 7 miles per hour. Today's statistics have 78, low 45, there was no rain today, sunrise was at 6.53 a.m. and the sun should set at 6.02 p.m. And as we look at temperatures around the state, we see Huntsville coming at 73, Birmingham at 84, Montgomery at 77, Troy at 78, Phoenix City at 75, Dalton at 79, and then down here in Mobile, we're coming in at 81. And as we look at the southeast, we see most of the southeast um, staying pretty much in the 70s and 80s. Um, getting as high as 89 in some areas. And as we look at the U.S. as a whole, temperatures are pretty much ranging from the high 40s, again, all the way up to the um, high 80s. So it's pretty scattered. Some places are cold, some places are warm. So it's, uh, temperatures are pretty scattered across the U.S. And this is very different from the normal, especially in the, um, in the West and the Midwest. They're actually seeing a, a big increase in temperature um, from normal. And as we go into current surface on the west, as it seems to be a lot nowadays, they have a lot of things going on, uh, cold fronts, warm fronts, low pressure system, high pressure system, high pressure system with rain systems here and there all across the um, west. But as we look closer into our area, we see there's a high pressure system sending out to the west of us with a cold front in the north. 
but there's not much going on and you can see the winds are very um light across uh across the southeast area and as we go into the next 48 hours we see um birmingham shouldn't be seeing any birmingham uh, all of alabama shouldn't really be seeing any rain over the next 48 hours but as you can see in um miami area down here in the uh, handle of, of florida they might be seeing some rain so during the football game tomorrow they might see a few sprinkles of rain but it only should be by an inch or so nothing too much to worry about and as we go into tonight's forecast it's going to be pretty cold tonight in some areas some areas is actually going to see some 60 degree temp so it's not going to be too cold the um, warmest place tonight is going to actually be over here in Phoenix with the high 70, but that's going to be about the warmest place. Some places are actually seeing some 29 degree lows also. And as we go into Tuesday, our air is going to pretty much stay stay clear. But as you can see over in Montana, they're actually probably going to be starting seeing that snow. So some areas are actually starting to get that fall come into winter action. So just a little snow and some places might be seeing some icy weather too. And as we go into Wednesday, as you can see, our area is still going to be clear. But to the northwest of us, we're going to see a lot of rain systems going on. And some areas are actually going to see some um, heavy rain, probably getting about an uh, inch of rain to an inch and a half of rain. And as we go into Thursday, we can see that that's going to be our greatest chance of having some rain. And as we go into Friday, we might still see that rain. And as we go into tonight's forecast, it's going to be a clear night with no rain, um, not a chance of rain. With light winds coming from the north at 3 miles per hour with low of 45. Tomorrow's forecast is going to be sunny with winds coming from the east at 6 miles per hour with a high of 79. Class outlook, you might want to keep a jacket all day. And as we look at our four day forecast, we can see that um, it's going to be nice and sunny all throughout the weeks with highs in the 70s and 80s. So, as you can see, Taylor, it's going to be a beautiful week with only a uh, disruption on Thursday. We may or may not get that rain. Okay, well, it's still nice weather no matter what. So, thank you very much, Jerrica. Thank you. Thank you.